The month of fasting has been described as a secret between Allah and those who worship him. It is a secret. Something shared between human beings and their creator. It has a special status. In fact, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, quoted Allah as saying, as li wa ana ajzi bi. Fasting is for me and I will reward it. Of course, he rewards everything. And everything belongs to him. But he singled out fasting and said, fasting is mine. It's for me. And I will reward it. So it is not surprising then when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had said that there is a gate to paradise called Rayyan. And this gate is specific for those who fasted. Especially set aside for those who fast. Which is why fasting was prescribed not just for us as Muslims today, the generations that came after Prophet Muhammad وسلم, It was prescribed in the previous generations. In the corrupted scriptures which are still available in the hands of the Christians and the Jews, you find Reference to Jesus fasting 40 days and nights. Moses fasting 40 days and nights. Not as the Christians fast amongst the Catholics where they don't eat fish or, you know, they don't eat meat, they just eat fish during this period, Lent. They give up something. No. They are described as not eating or drinking anything. That was the fast of Jesus. That was the fast of Moses. And it is reasonable to assume that that was the fast all the way back to Adam. Though we don't have a clear text which says Adam fasted the same way, etc. But Adam the first human being, was also the first prophet of Allah. The need that we have for fasting, is it a new need which only developed from the time of Moses onwards? May God's peace and blessing be upon him. No. It is a need, this need for taqwa is a human need. So logic would tell us that it probably was a part of the religion of Islam that was revealed to Prophet Adam and all of the prophets. Hence. So, this secret, a secret which rises above the ritual abandonment of halal and haram pleasures and avoidance of sins and enters into what we may call the complete fast the fast of the body and the soul together complete 
so that the outer aspects of the fast go beyond merely leaving food, drink, sexual relations during the daylight hours. The fast is 24 hours. It is not what it is here or elsewhere of daylight hours from dawn to sunset. The fast is before and the fast is after. They're connected, meaning we should not think of the fast as just those daylight hours. Before the daylight hours, if we're up hanging out, you know, playing cards or whatever, waiting for Sahur, no, that's a part of the fast. The night is as important as the day. How we conduct our night should be a consequence of how we conducted our day. If our night is corrupt and our day is controlled, what is going to happen at the end of Ramadan? Are we going to be able to come out of Ramadan changed? Is Ramadan going to have an impact on us? No. Because we have not treated the days of Ramadan as 24 hours. We have only counted from 3.30 approximately to 6.30. Right? That's 9 and 6, 15 hours. Some place it's 18 hours, 19 hours. But we're just counting those hours as the hours of the fast. But it is a day. Each day, Ramadan, is made up of days, each one having 24 hours. That's why we have emphasis placed on tahajjud in Ramadan. There is emphasis on tahajjud all the time. General emphasis, the best prayer, the best prayer that we can make after the obligatory prayer is the night prayer, tahajjud. That's fact. It is the best prayer. That night prayer where we get up from sleep and we pray, in the dark, where nobody sees us, so there's no issue of showing how pious we are. It's just between us and Allah. That night prayer is the most important prayer after our obligatory prayers. Tahajjud. 